What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another video on Transformers Reactivate. It's been relatively quiet in terms of actual updates from the developers in Hasbro, but you guys know how I'm making it a point to just bring you some awesome new details just to keep the momentum going. Like there's just something about this project that has my complete and total interest man. There are just so many questions I have, such as what was going on in the wake of this devastating attack that left the earth and its inhabitants in ruin? And how are the Autobots and Decepticons gonna work in tandem with one another to stop this new enemy known as the Legion? There's a lot of stuff we wanna know, but before we try to piece in those clues, I wanna remind you of this week's sponsor, Mech Arena. It's a killer mech shooter that's super easy to get into, and it features tournaments, 5v5 death matches, and free for all modes. The game is completely free on Android and iOS and PC, and if you use my link, you'll get bonuses worth $30. We're talking one skin, one Prodigy crate, and 5,000 credits to help kickstart your game. So what are you waiting for? Jump on that deal now. The link will be at the top of my description and in a pinned comment. But yeah guys, even though the news has been so scarce with this game, my hype has yet to waver. There's just so much that they can do with Transformers that has me excited about this. As we see, it already has a very realistic aesthetic and the stakes have already been raised to the roof because the enemy has essentially already won. This sinister, hive-minded intelligence known as the Legion has consumed everything on Earth, including Cybertronians, and now the human and the Cybertronian factions from both sides need to link together and stop it before it consumes the entire galaxy. And there is so much that I love about that because for one, we're not just doing the traditional Autobots versus Decepticons. We're doing something where the humans are involved and are teamed up with both factions. And hopefully it's done in a way that doesn't make the humans a burden because that's something that has always been an issue when it comes to Transformers. The humans always seem to get in the way. But in this, it seems like the humans are going to be the key component to reactivating these Transformers, which the title alludes to. Even though we got a trailer featuring a first person perspective of what looks to be Bumblebee, it does doesn't look like that'll be the formula that gameplay will consist of. Considering Splash Damage's experience, I can imagine that Transformers Reactivate will have a mixture of action and shooting, and I'm hoping that more details regarding the gameplay will be released as we get closer to the closed beta. That's obviously something gamers want to see, especially those who are fans of the Cybertron series who hold that to a gold standard when it comes to gameplay. There's also the execution of the story, like how well is that going to be done? It already has a very dark tone to it but I hope that it captures the actual essence of the Transformers. Like, don't get me wrong, we know that they can take it there when it comes to the dark tones, but there needs to be a bit of comedy to accompany that. The Cybertronian roster is stacked with a very colorful cast of characters and they all come with their own unique personality traits and that's something that I want to see shine through. Even though both factions are working in tandem with one another, we already know that they're not going to get along and there's a high probability that the Decepticons will lash out at the humans because they hate everything, <laughs> you know? So I'm hoping that the story writers really take it there with the whole trust factor. Just because a character is an Autobot, I don't want them to instantly get along with the humans because we know that there are characters that seem like they're above that. And since character creation is going to be a thing in this, I hope that you get allowed to jump over to the Autobots or the Decepticons. That's going to be an extreme bump in the replayability department and it's going to make you think twice on what you should do. And we've kind of already gotten hints of that from the leaked trailer we got featuring Shockwave and Ratchet where we see Ratchet working on one of the little corrupted cores and we see Shockwave examining one but it doesn't seem like he's doing it for the same reasons that Ratchet is doing it. You can be a casual fan who's not that familiar with Shockwave, like it doesn't take rocket science to realize that this guy is a very unreadable character. The guy doesn't necessarily have a face to read, he's just a head with an eye and that makes him a very viable candidate to add to that will they or won't they turn heel if you know what I mean. I think there should be a feature where characters such as Ratchet and Shockwave come up with suggestions and it doesn't matter who makes the good suggestion you just go with it and that causes tension between both factions. But with all of my wishes aside we gotta talk about the online component because that's gonna be the thing that takes center stage when it comes to Transformers Reactivate. For those of you who've been living under a rock or Patrick Starr's basement, Transformers Reactivate is gonna be a 1-4 to four player online action game. As mentioned earlier, the details on the gameplay are a bit sparse 
far since we only got a CGI trailer to go off of, but since it's multiplayer, it's most likely going to be made with co-op in mind. And I'm not really a huge advocate when it comes to online co-op, especially in a campaign. I'm more of a completionist that just loves going out there alone, at least with a couple of AI controlled characters, and just doing it the old fashioned way as opposed to with real people. But I do think that there's a lot of potential with this. Since there's essentially going to be a created character mode, then there's an endless possibility when it comes to multiplayer game modes. If Splash Damage wanted to, they could take a page out of High Moon Studios' book on what they did with the Cybertron games, which means accompanying that online co-op with some competitive multiplayer modes. If you remember, you couldn't necessarily control any of the named characters, and instead you had to create your own Transformer. Similar to the campaign, generic multiplayer characters were split into four character classes. If you remember, you had to select a base model and vehicle form for your character, and then you could change the colors and modify the weapon loadouts and abilities based on the character class. And it had an experience and leveling system to make you feel like you were actually achieving something. You actually feel like a boss, like if you got your character to a certain level. Similar to that of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I really think they should have a free for all deathmatch along with a team deathmatch just to spice things up for those who want that competitive gameplay. That's going to bring players back and that's going to keep the online community popping. And I think a hub would be nice just for those who don't want to actually fight. They can just chill and talk to other fans of Transformers. I think I speak for everyone when I say the overall goal to having an active game is to have an active community that keeps the online servers up. That's why a lot of people still like to go back to the Cybertron games, particularly Fall of Cybertron, because it has such an awesome and tight-knit community to go along with the awesome features that the game boasted so yeah let's get all those things in order and i know you guys are all wondering when are we actually going to get our hands on a gameplay let alone hear about the new details pertaining to it because the only details we know is that the beta is going to be open in 2023 and that's it we haven't been given a definitive release window or date and we just really want to get our hands on the game and see what it has to offer. Like we've seen leaked screens of the gameplay but they were early pre-alpha builds. Based on today's standards of visual fidelity they don't really boast a lot. The interface looked very prehistoric and it had this old wacky cell shaded look to it which doesn't quite match the serious tone that was seen in the reveal trailer. But thankfully we got the confirmation that this game will be pushing the envelope in the graphics graphics department because it is being developed with Unreal Engine 5, so it'll at least look like a current gen title. We still don't know the exact consoles the game will be released on since they only show the Sony and Microsoft logo, but I am expecting it to be released on the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. But anyways, that's besides the point. When can we get our hands on the beta? Now. Based on certain information, I think it's safe to assume that we could possibly be seeing the beta in August because it's been quite some time since we got that announcement trailer. And there are a few events taking place during this month, one of which includes Gamescom, which remains one of the world's absolute biggest consumer video game conventions. After taking a two year hiatus due to C19, it returned with a vengeance in 2022 and they'll be opening their doors again to game industries and the public in 2023 and we can expect to see plenty of big game reveals along with surprise announcements and I have a nagging suspicion that Splash Damage will be in attendance with Transformers Reactivate because by then it'll have been 9 months since the announcement trailer dropped. And this will be the perfect time to just give a gameplay demonstration with some kind of cinematic set piece and then they could drop that big bombshell, no pun intended, that the beta is releasing the same day. Depending on how good the gameplay looks, it could get us really hyped and we can get our hands on the game ourselves and see how well it plays. And then after that, the game will probably come out in 2024 of next year. I think that's a big window of time for us to just give Splash Damage all the feedback they can get to come with a fully polished and optimized game. But anyways, I don't have any more news or details in regards to when we can actually see this game, but I do have some details on something that Transformers is notorious for. As you know, Transformers is one of the very few IPs that's known for its toys, and it's only right that Hasbro seized the opportunity to milk Transformers Reactivate by releasing their own toys for this game. Earlier in March, we got news on a product for Transformers Reactivate pertaining to a Voyager class Optimus Prime and Deluxe Soundwave listing. While we didn't get any images on these so-called toy leaks, we were provided with details on the size of the toys as well as certain villains that could potentially appear in Transformers Reactivate. 
For the Voyager class Optimus Prime, he'll be coming in at around 6.5 inches and for the Deluxe class Soundwave, he'll come at around 5.5 inches. Both figures will come with video game inspired alt modes such as Optimus Prime's figure which converts to a earth truck mode in 37 steps and Soundwave's figure will convert to a SUV in 16 steps. Both toys feature premium metallic battle damage decal including sonic cannon, concussion blaster, the ion blaster, an energon axe weapon accessories, and the matrix of leadership accessories. And if you ask me that sounds like a pretty good deal, it seems like it's gonna boast a lot of detail and it's gonna really put a lot of emphasis on that battle damage damage aesthetic, especially since this is taking place when the Earth is in ruins by the Legion. So it sounds really cool, but one of the things that made me raise an eyebrow is when they mention the Quintessons. It says when the Quintessons attack New York City, an unlikely alliance must be forced to stop the alien threat. In Transformers Rise, Autobots and Decepticons team up to stop the Quintesson Menace before they take over the universe. So yeah, I wasn't expecting to hear the Quintessons mentioned in this game, especially when it said that the main antagonist is supposed to be the Legion, but there have been speculations going around the internet and blogospheres that the Quintessons may be the ones responsible for unleashing the Legion on the Earth. They've always been a key player and an antagonist to the Transformers, not to mention that they were once responsible for creating the Transformers. So this could potentially be a unique twist and a potential spoiler to what we could see in the game. But I'm not ready to throw all my eggs in one basket just yet because it does mention the name Transformers Rise Which was a working title for this game and the Quintessons could be a placeholder for the Legion But we'll just have to wait and see anyways That's all I have for you guys today I hope you enjoyed this video because I had a lot of fun making it as I mentioned earlier We could be seeing a gameplay demonstration in August of this year at Gamescom So sit tight and stay tuned for that if it actually happens like take my word with a very small grain of salt but what are your thoughts on this? Do you think we can see it at Gamescom this year? Or do you think it will be a little late in the year? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I asked you like or dislike this video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, you can give it a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed this video, I ask that you share it with all your friends and family members on all the different social media outlets. Sharing is caring. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. You're